Football on the Big Ten Network is presented by Marathon. You are looking down the tunnel at Camp Randall Stadium in Madison, Wisconsin. We are minutes away from the kickoff. The 2-0 Georgia Southern Eagles for the first time play the Wisconsin Badgers who are 1-1 one one so far this year. Over 75,000 waiting at Camp Randall Stadium. It's time for the Wisconsin Badgers to take the field in front of their home crowd for the second time in 2023. out on the field a new coach and it is just four minutes away from kickoff with Matt Mellon I'm Mark Falwell great to have you tuned in for our coverage here on the Big Ten Network so for Wisconsin new coach new coaching staff new schemes it is a time of transition but there's still a reliance on old faithful and what I'm talking about Matt is the running game and Wisconsin's got a great pair of running backs. so when you take over a new program there's one thing that you have to learn you have to use what you have there and what they have here at Wisconsin has always been a strong running game. It's the strength of that offensive line, and they got two running backs are legit. And Braylon Allen's 245-pound, six foot two. He's a power runner and he's got speed. Chess Malusi, he's a little bit of a knuckleball. So he'll come in a little lighter. He'll make you miss a little bit. Both of them are good catching the ball out of the backfield. Yes, indeed they are. As a matter of fact, Allen has 13 catches this year. So that dynamic duo of a running game, like it would in any offense when it's effective, it can open things up for the quarterback. And there's an experienced quarterback, but new quarterback here with the Badgers. That's Tanner Mordecai. Yeah, and I think you said it right, new. And what does new mean? New means you have to learn. And learning means you have to learn your receivers. Receivers have to learn the quarterback. But the one thing about Tanner Mordecai, he's got a strong arm, the ball comes out quick, and he's accurate. And, of course, the Badgers always lean on their defense. It's a good collective group. One of the individuals that stands out, the top tackler in the Big Ten, safety, Hunter Wooler. When you watch Wooler, he's going to be all over the field today. Sometimes he's down tight, sometimes he's back. What he always is, is he has... He has really good instincts, and he's always around the football. You'll see a lot of them today. You are looking at Camp Randall Stadium, and down on the field is Elise Mediker. Hello, Elise. Hi, Mark. With losses come a lot of lessons. The wise words of Wisconsin center Tanner Bordellini saying last week just too many small mistakes, self-inflicted mistakes that he says if we want to be a great team, those can't happen. But this is an offense, mistakes or not, that Georgia Southern head coach Clay Helton says that these running backs, yeah, they give him nightmares at night, saying this offense, he can feel it's ready it's on the brink of exploding and he just doesn't want it to be against them thank you very much Elise there's Clay Helton second year as Georgia Southern's head coach of course he was the longtime head coach at USC from Gainesville Florida Helton is 51 years old six full seasons as head coach at USC and we know what a great program that Luke Fickle built at Cincinnati this is his first season as the Badgers head coach. They're one and one, a win at home against Buffalo, a loss on the road against Washington State. Fickle, 50 years old, 15 seasons on the staff at Ohio State, six years as the head coach at Cincinnati, where they posted records of at least five seasons of nine plus wins and a total of 57 and 18. Georgia Southern has put the kick receiving team on the field because Wisconsin won the toss and they defer their option to the second half. So Georgia Southern will have their offense on the field to open up this game. We'll see the Eagles in quarterback Davis Brin in just a moment. But first, it's the Wisconsin kickoff with Dalen Cobb among those back deep to receive along with David Badinga. For those of you who don't know this Georgia Southern team, this is a really well-coached team. They're very good fundamentally. They don't make a lot of mistakes, and they don't beat themselves. Win so far this year for Georgia Southern over the Citadel and UAB, 49-35 last week. 
Jack Van Dyke to kick off. Wisconsin and Georgia Southern underway at Camp Randall Stadium. Thanks for joining us. Ball into the end zone, and Davis Brenn, who played at Tulsa for five years, will lead the Georgia Southern Eagles offense onto the field. Last week, he had the second most completions in a game in Eagles program history, completing 38 passes, 318 yards, two touchdowns, one interception. He sees the field pretty well. What I like about him is he's pretty calm in the pocket. He's a good decision maker. Ball comes out pretty quickly. They like to throw a lot of underneath stuff. Let's see how Wisconsin's going to play them. They've been pretty much a man-to-man -man team. Three receivers and one running back for Georgia Southern to get things started. And a very quick throw that sails into the sideline incomplete with the pass intended for Derwin Burgess Jr. and Alexander Smith on coverage. Oh, Smith made a great play. He read it really well and attacked it right away. Really had nowhere to go. Of course, smart move by throwing the ball up and getting it out of bounds. Well, only 18 incompletions for Bren. And two games this year, but one to start the game. A toss to Jalen White. White to the sideline and driving forward and close to an up yardage for the first down. Forced out by Muma Chong Mehta at linebacker for the Badgers. And it is a first down for Georgia Southern. Nice call. So what they did, they saw the tendencies are that Wisconsin likes to blitz from the, open, the wide side of the field, which they did. They ran away from it, and they were able to pick up that first down. Jalen White, 914 rushing yards last season, 165 so far in two games in 2023. Just picked up 10. Brenda throw off the hands of Holman, and then nearly intercepted on the tip drill. Travian Blaylock so close to an interception in Georgia Southern Territory. We're going to watch Queeley, number four. He gets tangled up inside right there and is not able to complete the route. And he's anticipating where he's going to be. Should have been a pick and wasn't. Sets up this second down. We had an awesome conversation with the sixth year senior, Travian Blaylock, yesterday. Coming back from missing 2022 due to a right ACL tear. Bren will dump it off, but falling to the ground as he caught it was Jalen White. Bren was under duress from Rodos Johnson. Yeah, so they're getting a little bit of pressure. This is what Wisconsin did not do a week ago. They need to get pressure with only four people. So far, they've been able to do it in the first series. That loss that Matt is referring to last week, 31-22 on the Palouse. Pullman, Washington against Washington State. 38-17 was the result for the Badgers in their opener against Buffalo. Third down throw and going upstairs. That's a nice catch by Caleb Hood. All the way up to midfield. And Hood, first down. Hood is legit. That's a great job by Bryn. Bryn did a nice job staying patient. Ball was delivered. Very accurate. The only place it could be high and away from the defender. For the Eagles last year, Caleb Hood was an all-Sun Belt Conference second-team selection. And this throw is behind Hood. Preston Zachman on coverage. So Caleb Hood has a great history playing for Georgia Southern. As a matter of fact, he has the most receptions. And as of last week's game against UAB, the most receiving yards in Georgia Southern school history. Yeah, he has, he has a knack of finding the open field. Then you're playing in zones, he finds a hole, and he has a way to beat you in man. He just gets another step. And with Bryn's accuracy, of course, that time he threw it behind him. You know, they've had a lot of running teams over the years at Georgia Southern, and they're running right now, and they're running for a first down. Marker's down. Jalen White has picked up a first down on a 13-yard run if... It's coming back. You don't even have to say the if. <laughs> That's all that was necessary, right? <laughs> Tim O'Day, referee. Holding. Holding. Offense number 74, 10-yard penalty from the previous spot, second down. Bishon Wembley at left guard on the hold. Yeah, there's Wembley right up here. Oh, there it goes. So that was more of a tackle. I don't think they, they don't have a penalty for tackling, do they? No, you're supposed to tackle <laughs> in most cases. That's one of those times when you can't. Okay, got it. Jake Cheney for Wisconsin is the player who was held by Wembley. And now O.J. Arnold is in the game at running back. Hood, who's already caught a pass, goes in motion. 
And sitting down in the middle of the field is Dalen Cobb. Not much on Cobb's eighth reception of the year with Hunter Wohler making a tackle. And you're going to, again, there's Hunter Wohler. There's one of, that kid is around the football all the time. He's got really, really good instincts. Third and about 15 or 16 here. And Wisconsin awesome at home since 2010. Their defense allowing only about 28% on third down conversions. This year, opponents 10 of 31 overall against the Badgers on third. And this is third and a long way to go. And Jake Cheney got home. It's a sack back to the 35-yard line. They brought Cheney, but it was only a four-man rush. It took a little time to get there. You could see Brynn, he was pumping it a little bit. He needed somebody to get open. And Cheney was able to work from the top side. You're going to see him come all the way around. Nice job of slipping that tackle, making the sack. Well done by Cheney. Sack number two of the season for the junior from Cape Coral, Florida. Jake Cheney. Melbourne, Australia's Alex Smith averaging 37 yards on three punts. Will kick it away to Chimray DK. This is not a very good kick. DK runs up to field it. Short return. First Badger offensive possession coming up after this. It's starting in pretty darn good field position. Scoreless, Georgia Southern and Wisconsin. If you're looking for the Indiana Louisville game, go to btn.com slash gamefinder right now to see where you can find the game in your area. Tanner you know, Mordecai, the transfer after two years at SMU, previously Oklahoma. He's the Badger quarterback. Our first look at him, Matt. And the first thing you're going to notice when you talk to Tanner Mordecai is poise. The guy is not up and he's not down. He is dead even. I had to push him to see if he had a pulse. <laughs> Well, his feet and mind were quieter in week two, as we talked yesterday with offensive coordinator Phil Longo. And Ches Malusi will run on the first play of the game. There was a 30-yard punt, so the Badgers have good field position. Malusi just picked up a yard on first down. Yeah, the one thing you're going to notice about this Georgia Southern defense is they run to the football. That This is a group that gets after the ball, so a lot of counter stuff sometimes works good against a fast-flowing team. Bill Longo told us they minimize explosive plays because it's 11 dudes hauling you know what to the football. And it's been tough to run the ball on the Badgers' first two snaps. Malusi, who had the first fumble lost of his entire college career last week, may not, may not should have been called a fumble, by the way. Hard done by on the replay in the aftermath. Tempo here. Badgers third and eight. Both teams, both offenses are, are trying to play the tempo game. There's nobody middle of the field. Bordellini at center, the snap back to Mordecai. Mordecai steps up, got bumped, hangs onto the ball, but down he goes. Mordecai was going to take off and run, and it was a good decision. Because the middle of the field was wide open, they went man all the way across. They did bring extra people, and they were able to get there. But watch, look at this, it's going to be wide open right here. And there's nobody down the field because they're all in coverage. One of the things that Wisconsin does not have a lot of is a lot of speed at the wide receiver position. They don't run, they don't separate very easily from defenders. Davion Rhodes with the sack. Last week, Georgia Southern forced a turnover on the first play from scrimmage. This time, their defense forces a three and out, and Caleb Hood has the ball after a 45 yard punt. We'll return after this. Time for today's Auto Owners Insurance Impact Players for the Badgers on defense and the Eagles on offense. Well, you've seen this. We've seen them already. Waller and Cheney both have already made their mark. And Jalen White, you saw, had that nice long run. This is the previous third down that they had. I want you to see what they're going to do. Is they just played his own. So they're going to cover the back end with an umbrella. And then underneath right here and right over here, you have everybody taken away. And if you look real close, you can see it's a happy coverage. And Jake Cheney, who you listed as one of the impact players, Mac, Matt, that has had a sack on the play. Inside, Jalen White. And Wohler is among those who hit him hard. Preston Zachman, Muma Jongmeta, all part of that tackle. We played five minutes. Both teams have had a series on offense. And we got somebody down. Yes, we do. For 
the Georgia Southern offense. Tight end J.J. McAfee. Charleston, South Carolina, sixth year senior. Already 12 catches for 80 yards this year. Yeah. And they and they use a lot of them. They use a lot of them. McAfee is down right now here in the first quarter at Camp Randall. Next Saturday, we're all Big Ten all morning with in-depth previews of every matchup and live coverage from inside the Big House before Michigan plays Rutgers. Big Ten tailgate presented by TIAA next Saturday at 10 a.m. Eastern on the Big Ten Network. Mark, J.J. McAfee at tight end walked off the field, man. Yeah, if you look at this, this Georgia, Georgia Southern offense, you're going to see they are, they are a powerful group. They're just like kind of stubby. They're not... They're like 6'3-ish, 6'4", but they can play football. These are good football players. What you don't get is the the top recruit, like the 6'5", 300-pounders. Instead, you're going to get like a 6'3", 6 6'4", 3, 6 300-pounders. They play a good brand of football. And they have a 6'7 tight end who just went in with McAfee going out. That's the first catch for Keaton Upshaw, 60-year senior. Transfer from Kentucky in four years with Kentucky, 27 catches. And McAfee just had, I'm sorry, with McAfee out, Upshaw just had his first catch with Georgia Southern. It put them in a third and one, but that will be backed up. Full start. Offense number six. Five-yard penalty. You jinxed him. I did. All that. I did. Sorry about that. It's Mark's fault. <laughs> <laughs> Send me the tweets. There's a good football coach right there. That, that's Clay Helton. Clay Helton, the head coach right there, he has done a great job down at Georgia Th Southern, and uh, they're going to do nothing but get better. He said they handled adversity against UAB last week, but now they've got to handle the distractions of the first road trip and one of the most awesome places to play in the country. They'll need a new level of mental toughness. Got Here's him. a throw down the sideline. Got Dalen Cobb. Cobb catches in midfield. Stepped out. Stepped out, or he's he's got a lot more green to go. So did you look? I want you to watch first. There's no pressure. You know those squatty bodies up front are doing a really nice job. And then uh, Cobb on the outside, he just ran past. They messed up the coverage. He took advantage of it. And that goes for 27 yards. This run for Jalen White goes for a loss. Daryl Peterson, you see number 17 for the Badgers yeah, on the stop. Came off the edge hard and hot, and nobody picked him up, so he just ran it down from behind. I think, I, here's what I think. I think I think this Georgia Southern team thinks they belong here. And I think that this Wisconsin team is still finding out who they are. Georgia Southern 1-2 and two against Big Ten opponents, including last year's win in Lincoln. Here's a throw over the middle, Caleb Hood, Hood with a first down and then belted hard on the tackle by Kamoi Latu. Hey, I want to show you, I want to show you Bryn's release. This is really nice. Watch Bryn, he sees it right now, boom, ball comes right out. You see how that quick short release mark and dead on the money. Yeah, that went for 15 yards, but this one is on the money to Hunter Waller interception for Wisconsin. Bryn under pressure and it's a turnover. One forced by the Badgers this season. Yeah, that's on Peterson. Peterson did a great job on the pressure. That's the whole thing. If he doesn't get the pressure, that's a completion. You're going to see him coming off the edge to the top side, 17. Oh, and on the back side. So what, who was it? Wasn't Peterson? I didn't see the back. There it is. That's Ben Barton. Oh, Ben Barton did a heck of a job. He was able to, he beat that tackle and got the sack. There's the difference in the play. Minus five in turnovers of the first two games. The Badgers have forced their first. We'll see if they take a shot afterwards. Mordecai's thinking about it. Now he rolls and throws and he brings it down to Timmy DK. DK, great catch set up by the movement in the pocket and the time for Mordecai. And this is down to the 37 of the Eagles, 38 yards. You said it right, man. You could, you could read, heck, you could read any book you want back there. War and Peace by Tolstoy. Yeah, so absolutely. <laughs> and Mordecai did a nice job of finding the open guy down that left sideline. That's all comes to him from his 
offensive line all wide open. Marker down on the slant caught by the promising freshman tight end Tucker Ashcraft. There is a marker down. Yeah, they they brought pressure and they left the middle of the field open. Ashcraft took advantage of it. Illegal formation, more than four in the backfield offense. Five yard penalty from the previous spot, first down. So you can have the quarterback and three others. So you got one, two, three, four, and they're calling him right there for being lined up too deep, most likely. Which was a good call. His head has to be in line with the, uh, with the guard's hips. And if he's too deep, they're going to call it. Well, it's a shame for Tucker Ashcraft that that catch is wiped away. Offensive coordinator Phil Longo loves that freshman. Mordecai, little shovel pass. Here is Braylon Allen, the Big, the Big Ten's leading receiver. Marquez, Marquez, that is, Watson Trent with a tackle. 14th reception of the year for Braylon Allen. This is where Wisconsin's got to get into their their rhythm, right? They, there's, that's a work in progress, too. Mordecai. A lot of time. Pumps once, throws down the sideline behind Ashcraft. Wouldn't have mattered. See that official down the far end? He took his hat off and threw it, and then he was out of bounds, would not have been able to make that catch unless he reestablishes himself, and he didn't have time to. A lot of time to throw the football. No pass rush from Georgia Southern. Phil Longo said that it's hard to find big guys who can play physically in the box and can do some things outside the box in terms of movement. Ashcraft can do both, playing a year ahead for his development, but not ahead of his talent. Mordecai under pressure, running, flag down, steps out of bounds at the 35-yard line. MJ Stroud, edge rusher for Georgia Southern, on the pressure. Yeah, Stroud came quick. He came quick and made him. He, he beat his block and forced him out of the pocket. And now you're going to get a hold against Wisconsin. Holding. Offense number 79. That penalty has been declined. Fourth down. You can see Nelson here to the right in, in front of you there, that left tackle. He had a good grab of those, of his jersey. But on the top side, yeah, he got beat quick with an inside move. Nelson held Davion Rhodes, who had a sack. And, okay, what do you think here, Matt? This is fourth and seven, and they're going for it. Or they're lined up to do so, and they are going. 34-yard line, Mordecai hit as he throws. Looking in zone, overthrows. Just missed him. They brought pressure. They went man. He knew he had one on one on the top side, and that's the and that's what you go where you go to. Mordecai with the good read, just a little bit too long, or that's a touchdown. Looking for Bryson Green and Demel Hickman on the coverage. You saw Caudry Jackson with pressure as well. Timeout. On the Wisconsin Channel, there's no plus like home. Subscribe and stream for as low as $9.95 a month at Big10Plus.com. Badgers had an interception, but driving down to the 34 of Georgia Southern, the drive stalls on a fourth and seven incompletion. Davis Bren will lock it deep. Marker down, intended for Hood. Coverage by Nickelback, Jason Matry. Yeah, Matry had a little bit of hold of him. Pass interference. Defense number 23, 15-yard penalty from the previous spot, automatic first down. There you go. Oh, yeah, you can see it right there. Matry had him right in the chest, just grabbing onto him. Now the ball's up at the 49 of Georgia Southern. Wisconsin only three and a half penalties per game so far this year. More pressure. Just 30 penalty yards per game. Pressure, but Bren got rid of the ball to Derwin Burgess Jr. for his 15th catch this year. Bren, Bren is playing within himself. He knows he's going to get pressure. He knows he's at a little bit of a disadvantage talent-wise, but it does not bother him at all. These guys aren't blinking. They are just taking what is being thrown at him, and he's taking advantage of the open guy. 
Second and three. Wren retreating, throws off his back foot, and then swatted out of the air by Austin Brown on a ball intended for Jalen Barton. He was just throwing that one away. Wren, there's a little bit of panic right there on Brent. He he put himself into that into that pressure. He didn't have to roll out that way. He should have just stayed in the pocket and he had everything. So they're going to set up this third and four. Well, Matt, remember yesterday we talked with defensive coordinator Mike Tressel of Wisconsin, and he noted last year when the staff was at Cincinnati and played Tulsa where Davis Bren was the quarterback, they sacked him 11 times in a game. They're hoping he's thinking about that a little bit if they get pressure today. Bren, quick pass. Smart. And they find O.J. Arnold out of the backfield on a third down and three, picking up the first down. Yeah, so you know, you're going to have man coverage. All right, let's be smart about it. You're going to pick him. That's what you do. So I want you to watch right here. And now you look at this guy right here. There, that's called a pick. And so you're going to make him run through everything. Really smart. Bryn saw it right away. Really well done by Georgia Southern. 13 throws for Davis Bren of which he has completed eight. Thirty-one yard line is where they are. Georgia Southern and going up top, throwing down the sideline, and Matry, who's been called for a penalty on this drive, broke that pass play up, which was intended for Anthony Queeley, a transfer from Syracuse. Yeah, Queeley's on the top side. That's a nice job there by Matry. Really nice job. So Look right in the face. When he looks, you got to get your hands up, and that's exactly what he does. Nice and tight coverage right there. He didn't grab him or anything. Well done. Matry's a sixth-year senior, transfer from Boston College, where he started 19 games. From Everett, Massachusetts. Empty backfield. Second down. Bryn throwing sideline. Another pass breakup. How about John Mena in coverage there, Matt? Yeah, John Mena was lucky. Bryn. Bryn under through it. If he pushes that ball out, that's six. He had to wait for the ball. You're going to watch it. See how he has to pull up and wait for it. If that ball is pushed out front where it needed to be, that's six points. John Mena was on the back side of it. Wouldn't have made the play. O.J. Arnold, the intended receiver. He and Jalen White share time in the backfield for Georgia Southern. Two straight incompletions, setting up third and ten. Inside handoff, Jalen White, roughed up by Cheney and Peterson, and tackled well short of the first down, short by five yards. And so they're either going to go for it, you only do that if you're going to go for it, or you're going to kick the field goal. Well, I don't see Michael Lance coming out of the field, who's gone 4-4 four four on field goals this year, hit from 48. Yeah, this is pretty gutsy right here. It's fourth down and five for the Eagles. Clay Helms feeling pretty good. 20, looks, like, looks like they're playing man. 26 yard line. Caleb Hood was in motion. Here comes pressure. Peterson sacks Brand. And it's another fourth down stop. Wisconsin has one to match the one Georgia Southern had a moment ago. That's all coverage right there. Nice job by that Wisconsin defense. He's looking to the hard right. He's got, he wants to make this throw to the right. And it's all, he's waiting, he's waiting, but there's, there's no separation. You're going to watch this down on, the, on, this, on your screen here. Look, tight coverage here, tight coverage here, tight coverage here. Really well done by Wisconsin. They stayed right on top of it. Daryl Peterson had two sacks in 2022 and records a sack at a critical moment here in game three of 23. And a pass to the right side for Skyler Bell. Bell caught it and is up near the first down marker. Nice job by Hayden Rucci. It's not an easy thing to do. Nice block. He's able to spring him, pick up that eight yards. It sets up second and two. 340 left in the first quarter. Second and short, play fake, quick pass. And caught and down goes USC transfer CJ Williams. First down converted. East Carolina transfer Demel Hickman with a tackle for the Eagles. And a short tackle. And when you're locked up in man like that, Mark, if you don't make that play, that's a big time, that's a big play coming. So it's a nice short tackle. Hickman, six-year senior, transferred after five years playing for East Carolina. 
And this is a quarterback draw, and Mordecai is just able to dart in that little bit of space in the interior, and Tarian Lee tackles him at the 48. That's a smart play call. That's, that's well done. Phil Longo's calling these plays, and what you're seeing with a lot of man coverage, you want to get their minds back inside like, hey, we can still run this football. So you get everybody spread out and let, you, let your quarterback come up inside. Hayden Rucci in motion, second and four Badgers. Jump cut by Ches Malusi. And Malusi a first down and upended at Georgia Southern's 44 as we look at today's auto owners, insurance, impact players, Badger offense, Eagle defense. Well, you can see DK and Allen, both those guys are big pieces of the puzzle. And Watson Trent, the middle linebacker, is going to have a busy day. Georgia Southern's top tackler in two games at 21. Mullet throw, Shimre DK just speaking about him on the impact players a moment ago. Steps out of bounds at the Georgia Southern 34. Mordecai is in rhythm right now. You can see it. He's making really good decisions. Get to the line of scrimmage. He sees he's, he's got one-on-one -on -one to the left side, and he's sitting off. Take advantage of it. Just take what the defense gives you. He's giving him an eight-yard cushion. You take it. DK has a chance to make more of that. Three years at Oklahoma for Mordecai, then two years at SMU as the starter. Threw for over 7,150 yards in two seasons with the Mustangs. Mordecai sets his feet, throws on the money. Skyler Bell makes a couple of players miss. And the march continues for the Badgers to the Georgia Southern 21. This is all in the quarterback. He's getting the protection he needs, but he's reading things really well. Really nicely done. Uh, finds the hole in that zone. Quarterback and receiver are on the same page. Two catches on the drive for Skyler Bell. Mordecai is six of eight throwing the football, 77 yards. Now going downhill, Malusi, and it's a critical tackle by safety T.J. Smith. Yeah, Smith doesn't make that. He's out the gate, and that's from the backside. There was a lot of green. Up in front of him, does a nice job of coming from the backside and making that play. Even offensive coordinator Brian Ellis for Georgia Southern this week when we talked to him raved about what a hardworking player T.J. Smith is for the Eagles. Mordecai, clean pocket, and he finds Malusi, and Malusi squeezing his way up the sideline, converts the first down, and this Badger drive continues now first and goal. Okay, so this is the whole key. There's no pressure. He is able to view the whole field, and he went from right to left with his vision and found the open guy sitting over there all by himself. That's nice job by this offensive line. And another completion for Mordecai on first and goal. And he puts some heat on that one. Skyler Bell's third catch of the drive. Kept out of the end zone by Mark Stampley, the nickel. Let me tell you something right now. Nelson, 79. Huber, 60. Bordellini, 63, the center. Fertney, 74. And Malman are just dominating right now. Tons of time for the quarterback to be able to make the read and the throw. It is going to be a long walk to the other end of the field at Camp Randall Stadium. Because the first quarter is over, Wisconsin is on the two-yard line. They played some good defense in the first quarter. Big sack by Peterson. You saw the interception by Hunter Wohler. Luke Pickle loving it. First quarter stats here on Big Ten Network. Not much separating Georgia Southern and Wisconsin in the opening 15 minutes of the game statistically. Well, let's see who wins the offensive line battle up front. Low man always wins. Both teams have three drives in the game. This one by far the one with the most movement. Badgers, second and goal, two-yard line. Malusi, who in today's game has gone over 1,500 rushing yards in his time in Wisconsin, is held out of the end zone barely by Marquez Watson Trent, among others. Yeah, well, the squatty bodies won that one. And so you take your low center of gravity and you use it to your advantage. Come off the ball low. Now this time they'll probably fake something inside and try to get it to an edge. 340 pound Latrell Bullard inside for Georgia Southern was a big part of shutting the door inside the one yard line. Third and goal. And it's a weird snap, but Mordecai has it and scores. Just like they drew it up.
first score of the game, Wisconsin on the second play of the second quarter. But Mordecai did very well when, after getting the, picking up the fumble, is understanding where the ball was supposed to go, and he was able to take advantage of it. This ball is going right to the left side, right? See the, see the trap they're coming across? He just follows where it was supposed to go and gets the six. Well done by Tanner Mordecai. Transfer from Ohio University, Nathaniel Vakos is the place kicker. And he nails the extra point out of the hole of Gavin Myers. And Mordecai with a rushing touchdown. Wisconsin draws first blood. Here's that scoring drive presented by Marathon. 11 plays, 70 yards for Wisconsin, 440. The time on the drive, Tanner Mordecai, one-yard touchdown run. We talked to Tanner yesterday, and he said that he and new offensive coordinator Phil Longo mesh very well from a mindset standpoint. He, being Longo, emphasizes being stress-free, and Mordecai just had a stress-free drive, man. Yeah, he's stress-free because that offensive line is protecting them exceptionally well. And when that happens, you see a nice, calm quarterback. Now, having said that, that's his, that's his personality. He's, he's not an excitable guy. Dalen Cobb returning the kick for Georgia Southern. And right up near the 25-yard line. It's interesting, yesterday, you can see here, it's still longer right here. Mordecai sitting right next to him. And we were had a conversation with Mordecai, and it was clear and obvious that not a real excitable guy. You know, he's one of those guys who when you ask him a question, he's a yes or no guy, he gets right to the point. And uh, you could see that it, that's one of those people that they're never too high, they're never too low. They're always nice and easy in the middle, and that's that's what you want out of your quarterback. You want good poise, and you don't want him to get rattled by very many things. Most recently, Phil Longo, offensive coordinator at North Carolina. Before that, Ole Miss, Sam Houston, Slippery Rock as he has worked his way up the coaching ladder. This is a run by O.J. Arnold, and he stopped. And let's get more on the offense from Elise Miniker. Elise. Well, yeah, Mark, as Matt is describing Longo and Mordecai, I mean, it's no different on the bench. He comes in after the touchdown. Longo gives him a pound. They're right back to business. The two, they just sit on the bench together, and they're just talking shop. I mean, you can tell they're just really focused and true to format, as you described. Just even on the bench, poise, nothing really rattles him. He just gets right back to business. Arnold just ran the ball on the opening play of the drive for Georgia Southern. He went in motion out of the backfield. Got it. Brent pump fakes. He does have it. And he lays it in perfectly right into the hands of Derwin Burgess Jr. Cut from behind. But a big play for Burgess. Travian Blaylock saves a touchdown. 68 yards on the pass play. Brenda Burgess. You can see right away, Brent had great time. And then he, because he had that time, he's able to see the whole field and he's able to see to the right, the guy beat him. The nice throw, and then an excellent job, a hustle there in that defense to be able to run that, run that thing down. From outside of Houston, Humble, Texas, Travian Blaylock made the tackle at the four yard line on the pass for 68 yards from Davis Bren to Derwin Burgess. O.J. Arnold, that's a one yard run on the first and goal for the Eagles. Yeah, this ball is right where it needed to be, out in front of him. Burgess gets it, gets on his horse, but who really got Blaylock, man, he had two horses. That was, uh, that's a heck of a run to run that guy down from behind. He didn't have an angle. Bryn was just as happy as could be. Bryn, 152 passing yards today. He had 562 in the first two games against the Citadel and UAB. Anthony Queeley in motion, toss O.J. Arnold, oh he was thinking throw, but he's going to run for the corner and score. Mark, that thought of throwing, just that little hesitation, allowed him to get the edge. That was the difference in that play. Just that hesitation by the defender, because he thought he was going to throw, got him that edge. He threw for a touchdown last week. Right. O.J. Arnold threw for one last year, and offensive coordinator Brian Ellis said if the ball's not dropped, he would have thrown for another one last year. Yeah, so right. Yeah, we missed it right in the front. But because he did that, that's the difference in that play when you saw Darrell Peterson just hesitated just a tad. 
O.J. Arnold has a rushing touchdown in all three games for Georgia Southern this year. That is an outstanding response. Michael Lance with the extra point, and here you go. Yeah, so right there. So just that little bit, that's the difference in the play. The defender's thinking, I got to stop the pass, and th that millisecond is a touchdown. Football on the Big Ten Network is presented by Marathon, the official fuel of the Big Ten. Marathon, get the most out of your drive. As always, a great scene on campus here in Madison. Badgers walking in for today's game, which is now tied. Matt 7 7, Wisconsin, and Georgia Southern. You know, it was impressive. Georgia Southern didn't blink. They just got scored on. They went right down and scored. Didn't think anything of it. Did exactly what they needed to do. Big leg on the kickoff. Michael Lance. The touchdown. OJ Arnold, three yard run. O.J. Arnold, we had a chance to talk to him before the game, and he's, we asked him about the trick plays, and he said, yeah, we have a bunch of them. And you can see just that little hesitation. That's the difference in a play. It slowed up your defender right there, and because of that, it's able to get him into the end zone. He wanted to throw it. He wasn't open, so he took advantage of that hesitation. A drive set up with a career-long 68-yard reception for Derwin Burgess. Put him down at the four-yard line. And Arnold on second down, ran it in. Mordecai was 6 of 6 on the last drive for the Badgers. Oh, yeah. Off his back foot on this drive, and it's incomplete. Looking for Oklahoma State transfer Bryson Green, broken up by Demel Hickman. Hickman, that's a great play by Hickman. Great play. He fouls that ball in, watch, gets his hand up, and continues on it. That's just beautiful. That's great defense. You see, Green had a step behind him, right? The ball was thrown where it had to be. That, Hickman, that's a great play. Braylon Allen in the backfield. They'll throw it to him in space. Allen nice and Hickman involved again. Hickman's the one who made that nice tackle, Matt. Let's see if he can get the, the triumvirate here. Three by three. This is his second one. He's inside out. He knows he has a man coverage. You've got to come and take the right angle. And he comes down nice and low because he knows he's he has to tackle a 250-pound guy. They're going to play a zone. They have two deep. They're going to play five under and rush three. Now they're changing it. Just over three and a half minutes into the second quarter. Both they, teams have scored on their last drives. It looks like they switched to man in third and long. And they did, here and they comes a pressure. blitz. Wow. Big rush, and Mordecai has to throw it. There are shouts here at Camp Randall for a marker. Brandon Bailey, that's a defensive coordinator. That's a gutsy move right there. You went from a two-deep zone, and they checked into something, and he switched it to man and brought pressure on third and long. That is, that's a gutsy move. Cam Williams transfer from Washington, where he played for four years, and he brought the pressure. When you go man, you have an extra defender, and that's who they brought. Atticus Bertrams with the punt. Fair catch. Just inside the 29-yard line. 7-7 Seven -seven is the score. Tomorrow, a top 25 volleyball showdown comes your way when undefeated Nebraska squares off with Kentucky. Live coverage begins tomorrow at 7.30 Eastern, powered by Unleaded 88, only on the Big Ten Network and the Fox Sports app. We've already seen how good the Huskers are volleyball-wise this year. Kentucky is a defending national champ. Wisconsin, a recent national champ. Georgia Southern, you know, for years they were a run-based offense. Only the service academies right. threw it more or threw it less frequently than Georgia Southern. But Clay Helton, those guys are throwing it 47 times per game since the beginning of last year. 16 passes so far today. There's number 17. It goes to Caleb Hood for Georgia Southern as this drive starts at the 29-yard line, a short pickup of three or four. This is shaping up to be one of those games that the team that makes the big mistake that's going to be the difference in the game. Or the team that can generate a legitimate pass rush. 
Because right now, neither of them have been able to without bringing the extra guy. That officially went for three. Here's Bryn's 18th pass. Drop Low. It. Caleb Hood, the intended receiver, incomplete. Ball was right where it needed to be. Bryn's very, he's on target. He sees things well. He having the time to throw. Nice job by this offensive line. Good protection. Hood, Georgia Southern's all-time leading receiver, has caught a pass in 21 straight games. He's already recorded three receptions today, but that last pass by Brent intended for Hood was low and incomplete. This is third down and seven. Georgia Southern scored on the last drive. Trying to avoid a three and out. Pressure comes. Oh, and Jordan Turner delivers a hit. Pass is incomplete. And the punting team will come on the field. So they got the pressure with just four guys. You're going to watch. Turner's going to come all the way around the edge. And that takes a long time to get there, which also means it's a long developing route. But because Turner gets there and gets the pressure, it's an incompletion. Last season, Muma Jong Meadow was one, Jordan Turner two for the Badger defense. When you look at tackles, that was great pressure by Turner. Didn't start last week because of a targeting penalty carryover from the second half of the opening game against Buffalo. First punt for Smith was 30 yards. This one is better, and it's a fair catch for DK. Wisconsin at their 25. Still ahead, number 25, Iowa, host Western Michigan. And Rutgers battles Virginia Tech. Then in primetime, J.J. McCarthy leads second-ranked Michigan against Bowling Green. All coming up only on the Big Ten Network and the Fox Sports app. That Virginia Tech Rutgers game should be a pretty good game. I think Greg Schiano's done a nice job with that Rutgers defense. Let's see what they can do today. Lopsided win over Temple last week for the Scarlet Knights. Yeah, also the quarterback Wimsat's playing pretty good. After the fair catch by DK, Ches Malusi, tough run, initial contact to the line of scrimmage, but fights forward for three to the 28. Nice job by that defensive line, and linebackers are able to close that thing pretty quick. Kadri Jackson, linebacker, number nine for Georgia Southern for Clay Helton's team. He made the tackle, transfer from North Carolina. Hayden Rucci in motion. Second down, seven, and Mordecai incomplete. He let it get to his chest. That's the difference in the play. The Looking for was, Will Pauling, man. Yeah, that ball was right where it needed to be, but Pauling let it get into his chest. And those pads, they're not, they're not forgiving. Man, yeah, got there a little bit too soon there. But we're on third and about seven. Davon Gilmore on coverage. Pauling, seven of his ten catches have moved the chains this year, but that one was incomplete. This one is nearly intercepted. Oh, man, Ike Walker. Green was the intended receiver, yep, and Isaac Walker breaks it up. That's a great drop by Isaac Walker. Now he's playing outside backer. He could only got one hand on it. Had, had he been able to get two, he might have seen a pick. Great drop. Today, Isaac Walker has the honor of being the player to wear number zero. The player that Clay Helton says is tough, accountable, disciplined, team over self. And Isaac Walker, there's a lot more to tell you about that as the game unfolds. Hood caught the punt. Tough catch. Georgia Southern ball. Football on the Big Ten Network is brought to you by Auto Owners Insurance. Simple human sense. And by Discover, the official credit card of the Big Ten Conference. Now you see Monte Ball running through defenses as he did so many times here at Wisconsin. Today, the Wisconsin Athletics Hall of Fame class of 2023 is being honored. There was an induction ceremony last night. Hall of Fame members being recognized at the game today. And there is Monte Ball, who still is second in the history of FBS in rushing touchdowns. Great to see him, and he'll be on our BTN broadcast with an interview with Elise Miniker later on today. There's a catch and run for Derwin Burgess, Jr. And Derwin Burgess is one of those guys who can make things happen. He's, he's got a lot of make you miss in him. Not a real big guy. He's got really good hands. But you want to get the ball into his hand in open space. Went into today's game with 
89 catches in his time at Georgia Southern. He's a junior from Riverdale, Georgia. Here's Hood. And Hood on the perimeter eludes one tackle, but a swarm of Badger defenders wrap him up at the 40. Just taking what they're giving him right now. They're just throwing underneath. It sets up this third and about three or four. This offensive line has been impressive. And when you look at them, the guy who runs the thing is the center, Chandler Strong, just a freshman. That is really rare for a center to be calling all the all the uh, calls out up front. O.J. Arnold, who has the Eagles touchdown today, just went in motion, leaving an empty set of the backfield. Third down, throwing Davis Brennan and finds Burgess. Hunter Wohler on the tackle, but Burgess has caught it to move the chains. Yeah, and so you see there's nobody in the backfield. So they're only rushing three, so you got five on three. You should win that battle, and he does. And the way you win is to be able to find time down the field so your receivers can find the holes in that zone, which is what they did. 17 yards there to Burgess. He has a career-high 68-yard reception today. At the Wisconsin 43, play fake, throw, and Burgess too high for him and trying to juggle it and catch it but he falls to the ground and the ball falls to the ground as well yeah and that's a wasted opportunity they're not going to like that he tried to go with the one hand so he could get up but he was wide open there was nobody there a better throw that's six points because there's nobody behind him and no one around him this is a second down snap Georgia Southern has thrown on nine of their previous 11 second down plays in the game. And they want to throw it here. Nope. And Bryn does. And it's intercepted by Holman. Ricardo Holman, second Wisconsin interception of the day. He was trying to find McAfee, the tight end, down that slot. They just overthrew it. Holman nice. had one interception against New Mexico State last year, one today. Yeah, a lot of good protection, able to see the field. If the ball just took off on him. I'm not so sure that was the right guy to go to inside to that tight end because you had a safety sitting in the middle and one and one on top. Yesterday when we talked with Badgers head coach Luke Fickle, he said that and they, they, want to, they want to tackle better, and if they tackle better, that will force turnovers. Tackling has to come into play, though, on the turnovers. It's just been good plays by defensive backs for interceptions as Braylon Allen runs the ball here. They haven't been able to get Allen going. He's, uh, when he's, when you get him a couple, a couple steps where he can get up, get moving, he's really hard to tackle. They've been able to stop him at the line of scrimmage a few times. Maybe you should get over there and dance a little bit. It'll work, it'll warm him up. Don't knock the drum over. They haven't been able to bang on that drum yet this year. Again, these two interceptions today, the first two that have been uh, first turnovers that have been forced, that is, by the Badgers this year. As a team, they had 17 interceptions last year. See, Phil Longo went with two runs and sets up this third and long, which is where, where he did not want to be. He didn't want to be in anything over third and five. How will they manage third and seven? Juggle and a catch by Hayden Rucci, but an open field tackle by Justin Myers at safety prevents the conversion on third down. Yeah, the, the bobble by Rucci is the difference in the play. Does, if he catches it clean, that's a first down, but he bobbles it and it allows the tackler to come in. And now they're going to, looks like, no, they're going to punt it. You have to punt it from here. From fourth and one at your own 26. Yeah, you thought about it, but. And now you're down to 15 seconds, so they need to be aware of the time on the play clock. Closing in on six minutes remaining in the first half. Caleb Hood, you see him, number seven. And a game that is tied at 7-7. Punt by Atticus Bertrands. And Hood is going to let this bounce. Good field position for should, Georgia Southern. It, Mark, that should be a penalty on the Badgers because they didn't give him enough room to be able to make that catch. And there's a marker. Also a flag down back at the line of scrimmage as well.
Hood was able to avoid the ball touching him, which of course could have created chaos. There are two chaos. fouls on the play. Illegal formation, more than four in the backfield on the kicking team. That penalty has been declined. Kick catch kick interference, catch. kicking team. The ball will be put. 15 yard penalty from the spot of the foul. First down. That's a big penalty as we go down to the field, as promised, Elise Medeker with Monte Ball. Yeah, you got it, the inductee, Monte. What was it like? Congratulations, first of all. What was it like when you found out that you were getting inducted? Uh, there's really not a lot to say. I mean, I actually put it into words. It's, it's, I, I was just talking to someone earlier. There's so many emotions packed into these 100 yards, being sad, happy, excited. Um, but of course, last night at the Hall of Fame ceremony, it was wonderful, and it's it's quite the privilege to just be a Badger. When we were walking down here, the fans, they were seeing you, they were saying thank you, and they were clapping for you, congratulating you. What did that moment mean to you? It's, um, it's a welcome home. And when I signed my letter of intent to be a Badger, Brett Bielema at the time told me that once you're a Badger, you're always a Badger. And of course, as a young kid, I'm like, all right, that's just a quote they say, but it's very true. Um, that was a wonderful welcoming. The ups and downs, career, life, how much more special is this moment to be back here and as you're describing, a Badger forever? That's why it's, it's, it's so hard not to get emotional. It really is. I was crying last night, of course, but right now I'm holding them back because it's um, I'm forever grateful to the fans that helped me to get off the ground when I fell, to the coaching staff, to the teammates, uh, former teammates, and honestly, it's just um, something I'll never forget because it's all about what you do off the field, and, and I needed the help, and they were there for me. To be back now, embraced by the university, the fans, you're watching the game, you're taking it in, just describe the moment. It's a wonderful scene. Every time I come back here, it always feels the same. It's, 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 it's uh, just so many emotions going through my body from excitement to wanting to get out there on the field, wanting to strap up, put the pads on, but um, I'm a fan now, as I've always been, but I'm rooting for these guys every single week, and I'm excited that they have the opportunity to put on the Motion W. It never goes away. I can hear it. I can see it in you. You want to get out there. It doesn't. It never goes away. There's no way that it does. And it's, it's I want to get out there right now, but I can't. Well, you're going to stay here. Thank you for the interview. We appreciate it. Monte, thank you so much for the time. Congratulations. Thank you for having me. Guys, back up to you. All the feels on that interview. Great interview, Elise, and awesome to see this moment for Monte Ball. That's a catch, by the way, for Keaton Upshaw on second down. And here's footage from yesterday and last night and the the ceremony honoring all of the Wisconsin Athletics Hall of Fame inductees of 2023. Monte Ball ran for 77 touchdowns. The second most, most at the time, record has since been broken, but second most rushing touchdowns in FBS history. Georgia Southern, the benefit of kick catch interference Helped him start this drive in Badger territory, and the third down pass zipped to the sideline to Caleb Hood for a first down. Now he knew exactly where he was going with that ball. Brynn did a nice job. He understood the coverage as soon as he they motioned him across, and then as soon as he makes his break, that ball is out. So he's getting rid of the ball really fast. They're throwing underneath coverage right now. That forces you as a defense to make a decision if you want to step up and have to play man, and then they'll go to a pick package. Georgia Southern this year averaging 468 yards of offense in two games. They've just gone over 200. Daryl Peterson pressure. Uh, Brent still got the pass away and somehow floats it into Caleb Hood. This is exactly what I was talking about, Mark. So they're playing the zone and they're picking him apart slow. So now you bring, this time he brought six guys, right? And so because of that, to the open side field, they played off a little bit and he was able to make the play. Really well done. This is good play calling right now. Well, Brian Ellis referred to his quarterback as just a tough, hard-nosed kid, and he stayed in the pocket, took a hit from Peterson, completed the pass, rolling Davis Brad. Hunter Waller comes up and wraps him up. Well about, done by the Badger safety. How about Hunter Waller all, all game? We've been calling Waller's name, and that's for the first three games of the season, that's been normal. He does a really nice job. Okay, you're just tracking him, right? Now you have to be inside out and then make the tackle. Really well done. That's a good job by Waller. He's playing a heck of a football game here today. Yeah, as an interception. Came into the game second in all of FBS and solo tackles. 
So the scheme lets him make more plays near the line of scrimmage. Guys in front of him are keeping the offensive linemen from getting to the second level so he can make plays. Bren, quick fake through the hands of Cobb, through the hands of Dalen Cobb. Ball fell not far from Komoi Latu. They brought pressure again, but it's blocked. And when you have that, you're going to have, when you're matched up man to man, an inside break with a defender on your hip, you're automatically open. You got to hang on to that ball. Should have been caught. Good protection. The Badgers have to be able to get pressure on Bryn. They have not been able to get consistent pressure. They can't do it with three. They've had to bring guys. Have not seen redshirt freshman Terrence Gibbs in it running back for the Eagles, but he's in right now, third and 12. Bryn stands in the pocket and throws his third interception of the first half. It's returned by Jason Maytree up past the 25 and near the 30. When it rains, it pours, and that's what's happening for Wisconsin, who ends the turnover drought today. Just a bad decision, Mark. Bad decision. Had time, and then he got pressure at the end. He threw the ball. He just threw the ball up. You can see he's got to get pressure right now. He's getting hit. But the choice to go there is not a smart decision. Well, in his time at Tulsa, 37 touchdowns, 24 interceptions for Davis Bren. Three interceptions today, run by Braylon Allen, tackled by Marquez Watson Trent. So he gets, gets it from the outside and squeezes them, and then the pressure comes from the inside out. And because of that, it forces the bad decision. Yeah, James Thompson Jr., part of that pressure. Here's a run for Braylon Allen, picking up a first down for the Badgers. They need to get this run game going. This is their identity, right? This is what they do well. You have a kid back there like Braylon Allen. You, you want that machine working. Get it moving. Over 1,200 yards in each of his first two seasons in Madison. Fake handoff kept by Mordecai. Stutter steps and then steps out of bounds at the 48-yard line. Coming up, stick around for the Genesis Halftime Report. Dave, Jerry, and Howard will take you through the first half highlights and get you up to speed on a busy Saturday across the Big Ten. Next on the Genesis Halftime Report. Run by Mordecai, sets up second down and four. And it's batted up into the air and falls incomplete in front of DK. Had a wide receiver wide open across the middle on a crossing route. Falls able to get his hand up there and knock that thing down. This defensive line, while they don't have a pure pass rusher, what they have are guys who just don't quit. They just keep on coming. 6'4", 285-pound redshirt freshman, a large fall from Marietta, Georgia, with the batted down pass at the line of scrimmage. And that sets up third down and four. Wisconsin the drive starting after their third interception of the first half. Oh, and swatted down by Justin Rhodes. Rhodes recovered a fumble on the first play of the game last week for the Eagles, and he bats that pass down. Justin Rhodes does a really nice, great awareness. Gets his hand out there, had a chance for a nice completion to the inside, but knocks it away. And whenever I see Justin Rhodes, I can't help but I just think of Dusty Rhodes, the American yes, dream. Yes, of course. <laughs> of course. Oh, I love it. <laughs> Thank you so much. You made my day, man. <laughs> well, Justin Rhodes was the man of the hour, the man with the power, the hit maker, the record breaker. <laughs> Put a fair catch oh. inside the 10 yard line. We're back in 15 seconds. <laughs> Coming up, stick around for the Genesis halftime report. Dave, Jerry, and Howard take you through the first half highlights, get you up to speed of a busy Saturday across the Big Ten. Next to the Genesis Halftime Report, you see what's coming up on the Halftime Report. Well, for the Georgia Southern offense, Davis Bren, three interceptions thrown. You know, to your point a minute ago, it's it's been hard times for the Georgia Southern offense. I mean, not like when a man works at a job for 30 years and they give him a watch and they kick him in the butt and they say, hey, a computer just took your place. <laughs> but it has been hard times for Davis Bren and the offense for Georgia Southern with three first half interceptions. Yeah, but his defense has bailed him out, and so they're in good position. They're just go down and score. And here is a jet sweep and running to the right side. And a first down is picked up, or just short of a first down on the play for Georgia Southern. 
KD Dorsey getting his first action of today's game. So they'll, they'll they might take a shot, not not take a shot, but they'll try to get the first down here. They'll stop the clock, and then they'll see exactly where you're at, because they'll be happy just to join at seven seven. They're playing good football. They've made a few mistakes. Eagles have three timeouts, and here's a pass. Anthony Queeley caught it. Stiff arm Smart. out of bounds. Nicely done by Queeley. Get him hard to the inside, then he goes back outside, and then gets out of bounds. Good protection again. Time to throw. Going to put this Badger defense has to make it. To, I see Petrovs, Jeff Petrowski's in on that left defensive end. He's right up here. Transfer from Michigan State. He was always a good pass rusher for Michigan State. Ten catches this year for Anthony Queeley. He had 53 in his time at Syracuse. Long throw. Yeah. Tackled inbounds. Hallman, who has an interception today, tackled Derwin Burgess Jr. And the first of Georgia Southern's three timeouts taken. We're back at 30. Big Ten Network football coming to you from Camp Randall Stadium in Madison, Wisconsin. Story of the day is Wisconsin's defense with three interceptions. 7-7 is the score. 101 left in the first half. Georgia Southern the ball right now. Wisconsin will have it to start the second half. They won the toss and deferred their option. Davis Brin throwing. They just burned a timeout. KD Dorsey has gotten involved on this drive. Steps out of bounds at the 46. Mark, I think the, the, the story today is this Georgia Southern team does not quit. They are not blinking at anything. They threw the pick, their defense came out, they got three and out, they moved down, now they're driving. I'm impressed with this, this team. That's a nice job by Clay Helton, that head coach. He's, he's always been a good head coach. They've got a good offensive coordinator, Brian Ellis. He told us, look, he said, the thing that you have to say about Georgia Southern, he says, our guys are not scared, and he really complimented the level of high school football that's played in Georgia as part of the reason why they're taught well. Ball start. Offense number 17. Yeah, Cobb jumped. Penalty. First down. Yeah, Cobb got a little, wanted to get into his route a little too soon. So nice job by this offensive line, right? They are protecting exceptionally well. It's a good job by their Miller, number 56. Wimbley, 74 inside. You saw Chandler Strong, the center. Crowder and, and uh, Rasheed Miller, number 60. They're, they're protecting very well. And yeah, Crowder didn't allow a sack last year in over 1,000 snaps. Preston Zachman, pass breakup. That was intended for Hood. Zachman's been active here in the first half. Yes. Yeah, that's, a, that's good coverage. Really nice coverage on Hood. Going to set up this second and 15. Starting with the second half, especially against Washington State last week, he was on the field more. We saw Zachman at practice yesterday working a lot with the ones on defense. And Looking good out there for the Badgers. Second down. Running play, O.J. Arnold. They have two timeouts. And they gash him on that running play. It's not a first down, but it's a big chunk of yardage, about 13. Third and two, third and short. Clock keeps ticking. You're in good shape. Quick pass on third down, and Hood catches it. And then is able to maintain his balance, a hand to the ground to keep his knees from hitting the turf, and down inside the Badger 40. Time great out. fight, great fight by Hood. He didn't know he got the first. He tried to get out of bounds, but he did get the first. Stops the clock, and they're going to move it on. We will be back in 30 seconds. Michael Lance has some experience playing against Wisconsin. He played two seasons for Minnesota. Made eight field goals in his time there, kicking for Georgia Southern. He's made four field goals this year, including one from 48 yards. So that's what you're thinking range-wise for Michael Lance. So they need about 10 more yards, 10 to 15 yards here to put him in field goal range. Georgia Southern, one timeout left. First down and 10 after that pass to Hood a moment ago. 38-yard line of the Badgers. Bren stands, flushed, throws it away. Smart. Smart by Bren. Don't make a bad decision. Get on the run. Get the ball out. Live for another down. That good defense there by this Badger defense. 
They're only rushing four. They're not trying to get pressure. They're playing coverage, keeping things in front of them. Three sacks today for Wisconsin and three interceptions. Jordan Turner on pressure there. Caleb put in motion, faking a jet sweep. Wren drops back to throw and dumps it off for O.J. Arnold, out of bounds. Stops the clock. Yep, 24 seconds. Get in and out. That's fine. Just take what you're giving. You're going to get this third down there. They'd like to get the first. If they don't, they can try, they can try the field goal. It would be 50 51 right now. Yeah, this is this is smart by, by Brian Ellis. He's taking what they're they're taking the underneath stuff. Let's see if they don't. Now they're gonna jump up. Let's see if they match it. Looks like they're one free, which means one man deep and man to man underneath. This is third down and five, and it's an inside handoff, a jump cut. OJ Arnold can make the field goal a little bit closer, but does not pick up the first down. Arnold stopped at the 30, two yards short. They thought they were going to catch him backing out when they walked up, and then the defense backs out, then you run right at it. They're going to let this thing down, call a timeout, and try a field goal. Good first half for both. Neither team could rush the passer. Both teams can protect the passer, and the quarterbacks have been the key on both sides. There have been some hiccups along the way for Bren. He's thrown three interceptions. Mordecai for Wisconsin has had a stretch of time where he had a six of six touchdown drive, completed all six passes on their touchdown drive, and he actually ran it in from a yard out. I mentioned this before, but what I really like about Georgia Southern is they did not blink. You know, so they, they got what they got. They got the picks. They stopped them. They came down. They just picked the ball up. At about their 50, and they just drove. So I, I'm, I'm really impressed with the way this Georgia Southern team has, has come prepared for this game. This week, Clay Helton told us anytime you have success, it builds confidence for the next opportunity like that. Always. And what he's talking about is last year's win for Georgia Southern and Lincoln against the Cornhuskers, 45-42. And they're looking for their second Big Ten opponent win in as many seasons. They can go into the halftime team talk with the lead if Michael Lance can equal his career high of a 48-yard field goal. They're going to make him think about it for a while. They can only make him think about it one time. Under new rules, a team can't call consecutive timeouts. So Wisconsin calls one. We're back at 30. Wisconsin used a timeout again by rule this year you cannot call consecutive timeouts a team cannot do that so that was their one chance to icing on a career high tying 48 yard attempt would equal the career long if Michael Lance makes it nope. angle right to left and it never went left and so it's way wide right and the game remains tied after 30 minutes Wisconsin 7 Georgia Southern 7 and that tells you why they went for it on fourth down earlier in the drive Yeah, that's right. They had a fourth down and, and five I believe yep. at the 26 yard right. line of the Badgers earlier in the game and Went for it and, and Georgia Southern was unsuccessful in that particular attempt to go for it on fourth down and Michael Lance nowhere close on that field goal attempt. Down on the field, Luke Fickle with Elise Miniker. Elise. Coach, your defense, three interceptions. What's different about them today? Making the plays when they come our way. I think we got to continue it. We got to yeah, we got to sure up some things. We've got rubbed a few times or picked a few times and gave them a couple big plays, but uh, they kept battling. And when you keep battling, good things happen. Offensively in the second half, what's it going to take to really get something going? Well, we've, we've got to make some plays. We've got to get the ball down the field, to, you know, try to establish the run. We haven't done a great job of that and not very good on third down. So there's a lot of things we got to do better there. Coach, thanks so much. Well, there's Luke Fickle. We talked to him yesterday, had a great chat with him yesterday, first year head coach here in Madison. His team is one and one, and this game is even after 30 minutes, seven and seven on the Big Ten Network. It is 7-7, Georgia Southern and Wisconsin. 30 minutes played and 30 left to go here at Camp Randall Stadium in beautiful Madison, Wisconsin. 
Here are the first half stats from the game. Matt, as you peruse those numbers, anything that stands out for you? Well, I think third down for Wisconsin's a big deal. And then you can see the passing that Georgia Southern's been doing. And then I'm not necessarily sure that the turnovers and sacks are that big a deal because Georgia Southern has been protecting exceptionally well, as has Wisconsin. So to me, if you're Georgia Southern, you threw three picks, you had three sacks against you, and you're tied at the half, what else could go wrong, right? And so if you're, and if you're Wisconsin on the other side of the ball, we don't have enough to show for all the time that we held the ball. So I think both teams are playing very well. There's a lot of things to show from the defensive side of the football for the Badgers. Pass breakups and three interceptions. That really has negated the 251 yards for Georgia Southern through the air because of pressure and pass breakups and interceptions along the way. Yeah, I think Waller's had himself a heck of a first half. And just watching him, Hunter Waller's been... He's been all over the place. Has seven tackles, as a matter of fact, in the first half. Also an interception. Quarterback sack as well. Michael Lance with a kickoff. Jim Ray DK fields it in the end zone and down to the field to Elise Miniker. Elise. Yeah, caught up with Georgia Southern head coach Clay Helton. Said that defensively they're playing great. He's, they're keeping them in the game. But he said offensively it's frustrating. 280 yards, 50 plays, only seven points. So he said in this second half, and also mentioned a lot of it self-inflicted, the three turnovers. Second half wants to clean up then finishing the drive so that the defense can keep doing what they're doing the last five minutes. We could look up. We could be in this game. There's Clay Helton, second year as the head coach at Georgia Southern. Wisconsin, over the last 20 years, 47-2 and two in regular season non-conference home games. Only LSU, Utah, and Alabama a better winning percentage. They're in a fight today. Running downhill from the 25-yard line, a pickup of four for Malusi. Tackled by Justin Myers. I think when all else fails, go back to what you do well. That's what you have to do, that you can count on. And if you've got Braylon Allen behind you, hand him the football and let that offensive line go to work. Malusi right now in the backfield. He was tip. there to pass pro. And there is a tip, so it's an incompletion. And you mentioned third down a moment ago. One of seven for the Badgers on third down of the game. Yeah, and so what you want to be able to be is in third and makeable. That's a nice job there, getting your hands up on the football. That's the second time he's had one batted down. But you want to be in third and five or less, and they are not right here. Caudry Jackson got his right hand on the pass. 17th start in his time with the Eagles today. Mordecai, quarterback draw, and able to stretch for the first down. Man, MJ Stroud had his ankle. That is some tough running by Mordecai. And that, as long as it touches that line, that's a first down. Ooh, interesting. See, he's down. He's down right there. Knee is down. That is short of the first down. It's a good spot by you, Matt. Not a good spot by the officials. The ruling on the field on the previous play was the line to game was for a first down. That ruling is under further review. The replay official is Ken Kester. And you just heard the voice of referee Tim O'Day. I think you, I think you nailed it, Matt. Here well, it is again. So you have to wait until one thing, one of your body part is down, right? And so as he's falling, right there, right there, that, right there, and you are short. Yep. That is clearly short. That would be a fourth down in about a half a yard. Yep. Excellent camera work by all the folks here on our crew at Camp Randall Stadium in Madison, Wisconsin. The ruling on the field is that Mordecai was able to stretch out to the line to gain. They're moving the chains back. After reviewing the play, the runner was short of the line to gain. Therefore, it is fourth down. Well, it's a tough one for Wisconsin, but I think that the video evidence supports the ruling that was made, obviously, by... They just made a decision to go for it. Well, well. 
Let's see. What do you think about that? I I think it's gutsy, and I like it, but only if it works. <laughs> How's that for a fair, fair weather fan? There you go. It is fourth and inches. Rucci in motion. Wisconsin, their own 34 and a half yard line. Got it. First down, Malusi, but also oh. marker down. There's a flag. It's going to go. It's going to go against the offense. Yeah. Illegal formation. More than four in the backfield offense. Five yard penalty from the previous spot. They got to. They got to straighten that out. That's th that's three times today. Three think, times man. today. Yeah. Yeah. So. You got one, two, three, four, five. That's what they're calling. This guy should have been on the line of scrimmage. The uh, freshman tight end. Atticus Bertram's punt. Fair catch, a little bobble at the 25-yard line. Yesterday, we talked to Tanner Bordellini, the center. You and Elise and I all talked to him after practice. I and liked him. Yeah, I know. Uh, a great young man, but one of the things he pointed out very honestly was that there are lessons from losses, and one of the lessons of their loss in Pullman last week was self-inflicted wounds. Yep. And look at that. They're, they're going for it on fourth and short. They converted it, but it comes back because of the illegal formation. Yeah, that's that stuff bites you in the rear end a lot of times. For the Badgers today, the lifeline has been their defense intercepting quarterback Davis Bren of Georgia Southern three times in the first half. Wohler, Matry, and Hallman with the interceptions. And Bren will throw Dalen Cobb. Darts to the center of the field and has stopped a yard shy of the first down. Jake Cheney, the tackle. They haven't. They've been playing this zone quite a bit. Anytime you have a zone, there are always holes in the zone. And because they're not getting a pass rush, it, Bryn's taking his time to be able to find those holes. Davis Bryn has completed 23 passes in the game. Here's 38 pressure. attempts. There is pressure, and he's throwing it into double coverage, and it's still caught. What a catch by Joshua Thompson. Nice job by Thompson. The ball was perfect. He has a safety from the middle of the field trying to close on that thing. You have outside leverage with your corner. The safety can't get there, and the ball is pinpoint perfect. Right where it had to be. Couldn't have been anywhere else, Mark. Last year, Thompson only caught three passes for 179 yards, however. So that's a big play to Joshua Thompson. 41 yards for the sophomore from Johns Creek, Georgia. What a moment for Georgia Southern. And a throw by Bren, and he puts it right into the hands of J.J. McAfee for a touchdown for Georgia Southern. Uh, and they on. go in front. So he, if he had the ball, if he had control of the ball when he crossed the plane, then it's six. If it, and afterwards, if he pulls it out, then it, it doesn't matter. As soon as he crosses that line, he has to have control of the ball. Zachman saying he had control of the ball. We'll see. Let's take a look at it. Oh, it's a good picture right here. Okay, he's got... I, I doesn't have control yet. He's pulling it out. He has possession there. And now he's going to pull it out later. That doesn't count. That's that's going to be six. You can have control even if a guy has his hand on the ball. Mm -hmm. And in that case, Zachman had his arm between McAfee's body and the ball as he cradled yeah. it. So watch this. He has his hand on it right there. So right there, he has control, and he's going into the end zone. Yeah, that's that's going to be six. There's a timeout. Wisconsin is challenging the ruling of touchdown. The play is under further review. So you also have to have control all the way through the catch. Right. So maybe that's what they're going to take a look at. But it appeared 
that he did have that control when he crossed the plane. Firm control, body part down. The hand is in there. That's that's kind of meaningless. Now, he, as long as he holds it now, right there, he crossed the plane. Now he has to have control all the way through. So there's, there's through the catch. Now he's going to try to pull it out. And then you see that by Zachman at the last minute. Well, in a moment, he still, he still had his hands underneath. So when he hit the ground, I think, I think that's a catch. Call on the field is touchdown. And right now, referee Tim O'Day is going to the monitor because the Badgers have challenged the call. Well, keep in mind, the call on the field is a touchdown. Yes. So it has to be a really, you have to have some strong visual evidence to say that that isn't a touchdown. And I, I, I don't see that. Big hit coming over, by see, the way, still, and all that by Blaylock. Yeah, he still, had his, he still had his hand controlling it when it hit the ground. After reviewing the play, the ruling on the field of touchdown stands as yeah, called. Good call. It is a touchdown. Wisconsin has charged their first team timeout. That will also be their challenge for the game. Lost in all that, Mark. That was a phenomenal throw. Yes. I mean, that was a the, great the throw. second one Two in, in a row. row. Yes. First, Joshua Thompson, and then to J.J. McAfee for J.J. McAfee's fifth career touchdown reception in his time with Georgia Southern. Extra point, Michael Lance. And for the first time today, the Georgia Southern Eagles savor the flavor of the lead. J.J. McAfee caught the touchdown pass. Clay Helton loves it. Davis Brin celebrates his first touchdown pass today and fifth of the young season. And head coach Clay Helton sees Georgia Southern, his Eagles on the road in front 14-7 with 2.27 gone by in the second half. As 75,000 built out some ABBA. <laughs> it's returnable. Yeah, it is returnable. DK. Little seam. Wrapped up. 27 yard line marker. Too much rough stuff along the sideline. And if you're the Badgers right now, every little bit helps, and this will significantly improve their field position. So they have not been good in the run game, Wisconsin, but they've been blocking the heck out of this pass rush. They're... Georgia Southern hasn't been able to generate a pass rush. Is the return by DK and then watch at the end. Back the play is over. Personal foul, late hit out of bounds. Kicking team, the 15-yard penalty be added to the end of the run. That was it, there First we go. Down. There you get Mark Stampley, the nickel corner, coming in. Well, we'll see what happens here with the Wisconsin offense and the Georgia Southern defense led by 29 year old youngest defensive coordinator in FBS Brandon Bailey a Georgia Southern graduate last year defensive coordinator at Buffalo first year now back at his alma mater 29 years old he said you know they got to tackle well in the box tackle the running backs in the box and they've done a good job of that today and there's Isaac Walker coming down the line Braylon Allen got a push for six on that first down run. Yeah, that's what you want, right? In an offense, you want you get six yards on first down, you're golden. They just have not been consistent in this run game. It's only five carries today. Now six. Oh, and now they've got something doing in the run game. A hole for Braylon Allen, and they're having a hard time bringing. All the way down near the 20 yard line. Yeah, so that's the crack that you're looking for. You want to get him into the second level. Once he's on second level, he's a mismatch for DBs. 
32 yards on that run for Allen. Quick throw out of bounds. You know, yesterday, Matt, I asked Phil Longo, the offensive coordinator, about Braylon Allen and not very many passing yards relative to the number of receptions. And the point he said was running backs at every level have to be able to set up and beat safeties. Yeah. Now that was and that's what we saw yeah. on Allen's run just a moment ago for yeah. 32 yards. Yeah, and so in the run game as a running back, you are responsible for one guy. You got to beat him. If you beat him, you win. Flared out in the flat. Will Pauling got a block. Will Pauling has put the Badgers in a first and goal situation. This is quite a response drive. You see, T.J. Smith was the one guy right there. He had two blockers out there. He had two defenders. The safeties are going to be the free guy. So the safety has to make the tackle. As a receiver or a runner, you have to make him miss. Will Pauling, only 13 catches in two years in Cincinnati. He has 10 in the first two games for the Badgers. And that catch for Will Pauling is his first one today. Goes for 16 yards, falling in motion, jump cut, Allen, fighting, touchdown! Little misdirection, start inside, jump cut to the outside, and again, he's got to beat one guy, and he wins. Now, this is, this is a strength of Braylon Allen, right? Strength is his strength. So he's going to start inside. Now there's the cut. Now I got to beat one man. And he does. Carried Tarian Lee Jr. over the goal line. You know, Matt, we do coaches' meetings as we prepare for a game every week. And how often do we hear coaches talk about how their teams are going to respond? When Wisconsin scored earlier today first, Georgia Southern had a great response drive. And now vice versa after Georgia Southern took the lead. A great response drive from the Badgers, ending on a four-yard touchdown run by Braylon Allen, who celebrates with Tanner Mordecai. Well, that's how you avoid getting your heart broken. You score a touchdown after the other team goes in front. And then the, and then the crowd sings yeah. for you. That was pretty good. You know, I, and I know how much you love to sing harmony, and you wanted to be out there singing yeah. that. Yeah, they wouldn't recognize it as harmony. <laughs> Braylon Allen capped that last drive with a four-yard touchdown run. He had three carries on the drive. 1,200 plus yards in each of his first two years. The fifth player in program history to rush for over 1,000 yards in each of his first two seasons. Seven carries, 58 yards today, 219 through two and about 2.6 or so games. <laughs> Depending on how much time. Yeah, this is exactly what, what Wisconsin has to be able to do. They've got to be able to get Braylon Allen going. And that means that offensive line. And so... Really, in this game, he's had one run. Mm -hmm. He's had one big run that they want, yeah, and then 30. he powered the rest. So he's he needs more than that. 32 yards, he had a run on that last drive. Now, you saw the kickoff go out of bounds, but stumbling is Gibbs. First carry for Terrence Gibbs, and he stumbles in the backfield, and this drive for Georgia Southern at the 35 is where it starts, but it backs up two yards. He had the edge. That edge was there to be taken, and that, that uh, 30... The 31 yard line tackled him. Yes, the turf monster got him. Davis Brent, ball out quickly. Smart. Very, you said it. Yep, very efficient throwing motion as he throws it right on the button to Derwin Burgess Jr. Yeah, so he's taking what the defense has given him, right? And they're tightening coverage up. He has been really pretty accurate with that football. He's made a couple of bad decisions. But when he's thrown the ball, it's been right there for the receiver to make a play. Well, they get relatively back on schedule. Georgia Southern does after Gibbs tripped on the first down run and lost two. That went for, for seven. Going out of the backfield, O.J. Arnold. The five receiver set. Number five, Brand. John Mena, pressure. The ball. Interception. 
interception, number four, C.J. Getz. That was a tip. Somebody tipped the ball and Getz was able to get it because he had the receiver wide open. Pressure Jong Mena. The tip, I believe, is number 90, James Thompson Jr. And then C.J. Getz with the good hands play brought to you by Allstate. There you go. Good hands are right there. Good hand in terms of tipping it, good hands in terms of catching it. Because he had the receiver wide open. That was Derwin Burgess, and they ran a combination route. Burgess was underneath, wide open. But because of the tip, you get the pick. Career high in interceptions in a game for Tulsa transfer Davis Bren for Georgia Southern. That's four. This is Malusi. Wisconsin looks to capitalize on another turnover, and they immediately pick up eight yards, gashing the defense on first down. Nice job. They're just following Rucci. Rucci's doing a nice job with the with the offensive guard. They're pulling both, and then Rucci was able to get the, up to that second level and allowed allowed Malusi to be able to get through that hole. Six-year senior, 47th game for C.J. Getz, and a big interception, and then a ball through the hands of Chimray D.K. Put some juice on that one. You got to be ready for it. Should have been a catch, should have been a first down. Instead, it's third down. There's C.J. Getz. Mordecai, Mordecai's played himself a pretty good game here. He's been on the ball with I mean, on the on the dot with throwing the football. And that incompletion on the receiver, DK. He and Longo are having a signal discussion. Six seconds. Four seconds left to snap it. A lot of movement, time winding down. Snap is back. Pass is complete, Skyler Bell. First nice. down. See, that's just a leverage throw. So you clear out with the wide guy, and then the inside guy, you automatically have leverage. And all you have to do is throw, be accurate with his throw, because there's no way the guy inside out can, can cover you. They needed two, picked up four. You see how they ran the guy off, so now they're going to clear space. It's in man, and then you get that leverage from the defender, and Mordecai used it to his advantage. Play pick to Malusi. Another quick ball out, and this time sure hands by DK. And speaking of sure hands, you would say that about the tackle that was made by Demel Hickman. Yeah, nice job. Hickman's playing a nice game here today. Six foot, 185 pound corner, so the size to be able to make tackles on the perimeter in situations just like that. And you're all by yourself, so you miss it, he's gone. Made the tackle, nine yard pickup, Jim Ray DK. They're bringing pressure here. And against that pressure, an inside nice. handoff and an ankle tackle of Ches Malusi by T.J. Smith. Well done by T.J. Smith. They brought him down a little bit and they crowded the line of scrimmage. Does a nice job. He was unblocked, so he was able to make that tackle. Now, it's not a very big pickup, but a significant pickup was not needed to move the sticks. It was second down and one. Malusi surging for two. Braylon Allen was the man on the last drive. This is a steady diet of Malusi. Now it's Mordecai. Mordecai steps up. Room to run. And link to the corner and in. Touchdown number two of the day with the legs of Tanner Mordecai from 18 yards. Badgers in front. That's a piece of the puzzle that people don't talk about. Mordecai can run. Mordecai did a really nice job of pulling that ball down and taking exactly what was there. And what was there was an alley to the left side of the field for an 18-yard touchdown run. Mordecai has 19 yards worth of TD runs in this game. James Thompson deflects the ball. C.J. gets interception. That gives the Badgers the ball at the 40-yard line, and they drive it in with six plays in just under two minutes. The last 18, a scamper by Tanner Mordecai. Wisconsin 21, Georgia Southern 14. Celebrating after the touchdown, Wisconsin quarterback Tanner Mordecai. Big hug with the center, Tanner Mordellini. 
He ran it in from 18 yards out. That's the most excitement I've ever seen on Tanner Mordecai. He what? actually said yes. A lot to be excited <laughs> about. Kickoff is run out here by Dalen Cobb and tackled at the 23-yard line. Let's take a look at today's drive summary brought to you by American Family Insurance. Wisconsin's two drives in the second half have both ended in touchdowns. Now, one was aided in terms of field position because of a late hit out of bounds on a kick return. And then the other drive, Matt, starts after the C.J. gets interception. Yeah, and so now you want to see how this Georgia Southern team responds. This is how you judge your, your football team. If, they, if the game gets too big for them right here or they go back to drive what they were doing and drive the field. Georgia Southern has four turnovers today. That is the first time that Wisconsin has scored off of one of those turnovers. Toss, O.J. Arnold was able to bounce off a tackle, keep his balance and stay in bounds, and record a first down for the Eagles. Yeah, they were able to get the edge right here. Just a nice job tied in and block it inside out. That's just the nice job of, like I said, just getting the edge. You were able to secure it. Blocking on the edge was Keaton Upshaw, transfer tight end. Missed the first two games with an academic ineligibility issue. Transfers from Kentucky. O.J. Arnold, same side. Another hole, another first down. Rinse and repeat for O.J. Arnold. They've liked that right side of that offensive line. That Miller, number 60, and Crowder. And, of course, the freshman center. Chandler Strong does a nice job. And then the tight end, like you mentioned, Keaton Upshaw, he's doing a nice job of capturing that edge. Got a lot of experience in terms of Crowder as a starter at right guard. Not much experience for 6-7 tackle Rasheed Miller from Lake Wales, Florida. False start. Offense number two. Five-yard penalty. First down. That's on Burgess. Burgess, who has the longest scrimmage play of the day, a 68-yard reception. They put the ball down to the four-yard line in the first half. Same play. Same play. They're just... They're just moving the formation to the other side. Love seeing the wave making its way through the red clad fans here at Camp Randall. Bren throwing and sitting down in the middle of the zone right at the 50 yard line is Upshaw, the tight end. Nicely done by Upshaw, but the better job of picking up the blitz. Nice job by that offensive line and the running back. They picked the blitz up, and because they were able to do that, Upshaw can get clear in the middle of that zone. We have seen number 31 for Georgia Southern on the field on special teams. But now in the backfield to Bren's left is David Badinga. And he juggles, catches the ball, runs into one tackle. And great pursuit, but a marker down. Wisconsin made the tackle at the line of scrimmage. That might be a face mask. Personal foul, face mask, defense number 17. A 15-yard penalty be added to the end of the run. Automatic first down. Big penalty today for the Badgers. There's the face mask right there. I mean, it's not too bad. <laughs> Daryl, Daryl Peterson, right? Yeah, Daryl yeah. Peterson. Five penalties. Badinka. Five penalties, 55 yards. And yeah, grab the face mask of Badinga. Under six to go, third quarter. Badgers up seven, but Georgia Southern looking to tie it, and another interception! Doubling up on the day is Hunter Waller, and that is a five spot of interceptions! Waller, like we said, Waller's all over the field. Now he threw that thing when Waller was still about a quarter of the way there. He had to track the ball all the way through. He's coming from the middle of the field. He was going for six. Waller takes it away. Was looking for Joshua Thompson. Waller's second interception. Five today for the Badgers. 
Dave Brubeck would like Wisconsin's performance today. Take away five is what the Badgers have done. Five interceptions. The current ability to search goes back to 1996, and it's the most interceptions in a game for Wisconsin since. So the play is designed to put Waller in a in a uh, decision-making place, and he he doesn't make the decision that was anticipated. First down play, opens up, Allen broke a tackle, stiff arm, out of bounds at the 34. Let's take a look at that pick, what's going to happen. So what's going to happen is he's going to run a wheel this way. He's going to come in and go inside. So you're expecting him to be able to jump this. That's what he was anticipating so that he could get a one-on-one -on -one to the outside. But Waller sees it and sees the quarterback throwing it a little bit on the early side. And so he just makes the break for the pick. Allen, officially 15 a moment ago, and lowers his head and churns. Eight yards picked up. Phil Longo, the offensive coordinator for the Badgers, said what he loves about Braylon Allen. And, of course, what any offensive coordinator would love is that he could do what 225-pound backs can do at 245. He can do what 190-pound backs can do at 245. He's got some shake to him a little. Running behind Hayden Rucci. There's a little bit of that shake. It's four yards, but they only needed two to move the chains again. Hayden Rucci there tied in at number 87. He's he's done a really nice job here today in that run game. He's been able to secure the edge quite a bit. His dad played college and in the pros. He played at Penn State and then went on. Hayden's been here now. I think this is his fifth or sixth year. But he's a, he's a good blocker. Caught six passes last year before his year ended due to an injury. Here's Malusi running now over the 50-yard line and down to the field to Elise Miniker. New on the Wisconsin sideline this season, a drum with the number six on it. I've seen players go over to it and they bang it because, well, now I think originally it was meant for touchdowns. It seems like it's become just the big play drum. I've seen Wohler go over there a couple of times after his first and then second interception. I've seen Getz go over there. So it just kind of gets them pumped, gets them motivated, and they're using it. They want to bang the drum all day. Like Todd Runkin. 46 yard line. I know how much of a singer you are, Matt. Oh, I know yeah. you like that. I don't want to work. I want to bang the drum all day. You like that. 46 yard line, dumps it off. Oh, nice catch. Yeah, it was a nice catch by Ches Malusi out of the backfield to the 44. It's going to be one yard short. Very manageable situations, especially the way that Wisconsin has established their ground game, their right. grounding and their grounded pound going here in the third quarter. Yeah, they just stayed with it, and they're just wearing them down. And at Georgia Southern's turnovers, obviously, have been a big-time impediment to what they want to do. Malusi slashes through, first down. Good eyes by Malusi. Upended by Mark Stampley, but... Does the job. Well, doesn't matter. He knew he had to get knew he had to get that one yard and you're gonna take it. So they're they're running a counter OY to the right. And so it opens up on the back side, so he abandons that and just takes it so he knows he's gonna get the first. Georgia Southern's fifth interception thrown today started this drive. Hunter Wohler intercepted it, and they've moved from the 20 after the touchback to the 41. So a 39-yard drive. Oh! Wow, Braylon Allen, all of a sudden, it opens up after it looked like it was jammed up, and he's at the 34. Yeah, watch him run through the tackle. That's the whole key. He never stops his feet. Right there, they just, if you wrap him, you got to put him to the ground, and he they don't, and he keeps on moving. It's really nice. Like, right there. Good job. Change direction, get back out there, just use his power. Loved our chat with Phil Longo yesterday. He said, football is simple. People are complicated. <laughs> and it's simple football getting the job done right now for the Badgers. Mordecai play fake. Quick flip. Ashcraft, the freshman tied in. Hit from behind and driven forward. And the ball's down between the 15 and 16. Just a good design play. Ashcraft does a nice job just getting out there and taking what's what uh, what's there. 
Ashcraft, just a just a freshman. He's got to be a good player. Right spot of camp. Offensive coordinator Phil Longo said yesterday the way he came forward and getting the opportunity, he said, to play a year ahead from a development standpoint, but he's not playing a year ahead of what his talent is. And he's out of the pattern again, and Mordecai will roll and throw it to him. And Ashcraft fights off a defender and has the ball in a first and goal. Taken out of bounds at the two-yard line. It's a real simple play just underneath. He just... That's just good execution right there. Ashcraft, you want to see him get a little bit better on the line of scrimmage. See him be a little better blocker, but his receiving skills are pretty good. Wisconsin did not cash in on the first three Georgia Southern turnovers today, but they did earlier in the quarter on the fourth, and they're beating on the door here on the fifth. And they're in. Another cash in. Untouched, Braylon Allen. And Wisconsin extends the lead. What you're seeing right now is that offensive line is just kind of taking over the game. Imposing their will. When you get a big offensive line like that, you can be physical all game long. And then they have a big back like Braylon Allen. You just keep on hammering it. Eventually something's going to give. Ten plays, 80 yards. Hunter Wohler's interception set it up. 5.05 off the clock on the drive. We're down to 39 seconds remaining in the third quarter. And Wisconsin has flipped the script. They were down by seven earlier in the third quarter. Now up 14, back at 30. Well, one of the things you can do in the running game is wear the opponent down. Allen didn't have a lot of opportunities in the first half, but in the second half, he making the most of his opportunities. Yeah, and uh, and so with a guy like Braylon Allen, you're there's a lot dependent upon that offensive line uh, about wearing guys down as well. And so what you got to be able to do is just stay on him, and he'll take care of the second part. Kick return, Dalen Cobb for Georgia Southern to the 24. Braylon Allen's one of those guys you can get hits on him. He's a powerful guy, but every hit you take takes a toll. And so the longer the game goes, he just they just kind of wear you down. That's that offensive line and and Braylon Allen. Plunge from two yards. Capped a 10 play 80 yard drive. If you're just tuning into the game, Georgia Southern on their first drive of the third quarter went in front 14 seven on a touchdown reception by JJ McAfee. Wisconsin answered with a touchdown drive to tie it. And then they have taken two interceptions thrown by the Eagles, Davis Brenn, and marched down the field for touchdowns after each one of them to make this a 28-14 game as Jake Cheney wraps up O.J. Arnold on a short first down run. Game three. On what might be the last play of the third. The thing that's interesting with Brenn, it's not the decision. Decision... The throw, I'm sorry, the throw was fine. The decision to throw where he threw it was, that was the one you went back. And they are going to snap it one more time here in the third quarter. And a flag is down. Jason Matry on the tackle of a pass caught by Derwin Burgess Jr. And Matry may have grabbed that face mask. They don't run untimed downs at the end of the third anymore, but this is two seconds Personal left foul, in the quarter. Face mask, defense number 23. The 15-yard penalty be added to the end of the run. It includes an automatic first down. Well, Matt Georgia Southern trying to settle down here. They they are doing exactly what they were doing before. They're they're not flinching. And the clock starts on the ready for play, and we will have jump around right after this as we go to the fourth. One of college football's great traditions. You know it.
you have no rhythm, you can sit in these stands yes. because the stands are shaking to the song. It's unbelievable. I mean, they'd be jumping around any time, but maybe you jump around a little more when you've had five interceptions, when the Badgers have had five picks in the game and lead 28-14. Mark Falwell, Matt Millen, Elise Miniker, and the whole crew here in Madison, Wisconsin. We welcome you to the fourth quarter here on the Big Ten Network. Wisconsin, 28, Georgia Southern, Georgia 14. Southern their first time out of half. This will be a 30-second timeout. That is, from a Georgia Southern perspective, suboptimal to have to take a timeout coming out of the quarter break. Well, they, they were changing the call at the line of scrimmage, and somebody on the sideline didn't like it. And so this is not quite where you play it, run a trick play. That usually happens on about the 45 or so going in. Yeah, could be close, though. They do have, they do have O.J. Arnold in. O.J. Arnold's a guy who will throw the ball. Let's see what happens. Are you a Swifty? I don't know what that is. <laughs> a little Taylor Swift going on here. <laughs> got locked up on the tight end and if you don't beat a tight end as a pass rusher you should hang your head in shame and he does exactly that that's exactly the matchup you want for Getz back to the 34 second down and 20 for the Eagles who led earlier in the second half by seven Wisconsin 21 straight points since slashing through a hole nice run by OJ Arnold got the yardage lost on the sack back and a little bit more third down third and about eight balls up to the 47 Eagles on their own half of the field right now They'll need to drive it into the Wisconsin half of the field to sustain this drive. Will we be looking at four down territory? Officially third and seven, throwing at the sticks and caught and stepping out of bounds, Anthony Queeley. It's a first. Yes, it is. Pretty important play in the game from the Georgia Southern perspective, if you ask me. Yeah, absolutely. And then, look. Brin's thrown five picks. He ain't blinking either. He's still throwing, man. He's. I like this team. Under 14 minutes to play and down 14, but moving the football. Petrowski with pressure. Brin stepped up. Deflection. Good. And the ball tantalizingly hanging up for a potential sixth Badger interception. If I knew a tantalizing thing, <laughs> I would might agree with you. But this is nice by Hood. He can't catch it, but he tips it out of the way, or that could have been a pick right there by Latu. Kamori Latu back there. So was Division II All-American transfer Nizir Forturine. Had four interceptions last year at Grand Valley State. Second down at 10. Bren rolls and throws, and Burgess has got the biggest play of the day in terms of yardage for Georgia Southern, and he's bumped out of bounds. Mark, I'm going to tell you something. It's true. Bren has no fear. He doesn't care about the – when that ball comes out, he has all the confidence in the world that that's on the money, and he's been pretty much on the money. I think it's fair to say you could win with Bren. As long as he doesn't throw I think throw you could five. put that on a button. <laughs> <laughs> that was really in sad. Sta in Statesboro, that's, Georgia, there's a, a new a campaign button. We can win with Bryn. <laughs> yes, sir. <-y. laughs> Motion. Derwin Burgess. 
Well Keeper done. Keeper on third down and shorts. Yeah, well done. You take that step, you let it develop, and then you just go where they ain't. That's the go where they ain't play. They just in keep honor, on. They keep on chugging, Mark. In honor of the uh, old baseball player Wee Willie Keeler, hit him where hit they ain't. Hit him yeah. where they ain't. Ty Cobb was that guy too. <laughs> For all of you up to speed on your 19th century baseball players. Ball is at the 35 of the Badgers. And Bren throwing and looking for Hood, the all-time leader in receptions at Georgia Southern. Caught it, ball came loose and rolled out of bounds, but the call on the field is a catch at the two-yard line. So he's going to say that he had the catch, then he had it through the, through the catch and then fumbled it at the end. So here's the control. He's holding it. He's rolling through the catch. Time out on the field for an offensive injury. And it comes out at the end. That's that's a Rooting good the call by the official. Pass. Oh, maybe not. Second down. Wow. He rolled through that. It came out afterwards. He has to. So what you can't really see there. Oh, yeah. Okay. Let's see. Let's see if he maintain if he has catch. Now the ball comes down. That's what you don't. You, what we can't see is if he has any kind of control there, and there would be no way to see it. The first ruling. There was an overrule because the the referee that was right there signaled catch initially. Yeah, you have to maintain control all the way through the catch. Second down and ten. Play fake to Arnold. Oh, this could work. Underneath, it's caught. By the tight end, rumbling down to the 20-yard line is Bo Johnson. And that's a first. Nice call. Ball's out of his hands quick. Tell you what, this... Brian Ellis is calling the heck of a football game. Bo Johnson, nine catches last year. That's his first this year. The son of former Major League Baseball catcher Charles Johnson, who played a dozen years in the big leagues and... What a World Series with the Marlins. Balls at the 19. In the red zone for Georgia Southern. A lot of time to throw for Bren. Ops to run. And slides just shy of the 15. His clock was working right there because they were closing in and right behind him. The ruling is that the slide started at the 17. So only a pickup of two. Less than ten and a half minutes to play in this afternoon's game. Two timeouts left for Georgia Southern. Certainly could become a factor. Wisconsin has all three. Ball's out from Bren. Retreating after catching it is Anthony Queeley. He came back to the ball, which is fine. Queeley does a nice job where he made the catch. He's about two yards shorter, so. So I... Bryn, I mean, for all the, uh, the five picks that he's thrown, but Bryn... He's not backing down from this thing. He's going right back to where what he was doing. He's seeing the field well. well his behavior typifies what Clay Hilton, the coordinators, Brian Ellis, and Brandon Bailey told us about this team. They would not back down. They were not scared. They were ready for the environment. Oh, fumble snap! Fumble snap! Luma John Meta recovers! Turnover! Mark, the difference is a play is the quarterback didn't dive on it. He tried to pick it up. John Meta, he dove on it, and the weight of his body is the difference in this play. And the quarterback just jumped on it. Bryn jumps on it. He has it. J just jump on it. See? John Meta, John Meta is the guy who uses his body, and there's the difference. The final drive presented by Auto Owners Insurance recaps the entire day around the conference tonight at 11 Eastern on the Big Ten Network. That last fumble is interesting because one guy just wanted the ball 
and the other guy wanted to make a play and wanting the ball one out. And it gives the Badgers the ball of the 14 yard line running downhill. Chez Malusi. So look at what happened in the first two games and then the turnaround for Luke Fickle's team today because Wisconsin was a minus five. They did not force a turnover in the first two games of the year. They were in the penultimate place in FBS in turnover margin at minus five and now they've forced six committed none today. What a turnaround. Yeah, they're plus one now. What a turnaround. Hayden Rucci in motion. Malusi running again to the edge. Hit hard, marker down. Gonna, Big hit delivered by T.J. Smith. Yeah, it's going to be on Nelson. Nelson's the left tackle. He's long. He lets people get into him, and then he was he was holding on to him. Holding offense number 79. Half the distance to go from the previous spot. Second down. He got he got lucky on another one that earlier. He was latched on, I think, on a on a, on a touchdown, wasn't it? Yes, that's right. And he left him go. Yeah, you're talking about the Mordecai 18-yard touchdown run earlier in the half. There is a timeout for a Georgia Southern injury with 8.52 left. Football of the Big Ten Network is brought to you by State Farm. Like a good neighbor, State Farm is there. What a time they're always having in Madison where their team has recorded 21 straight winning seasons. Trying to go on the right side of 500 today at 2-1 and one with an opening season win against Buffalo and a loss last week in Washington State. Knocking them oh, out of nice their 19th throw. ranking in the country. It is a nice throw, and it's a run after the catch by Hayden Rucci. That flips the field and puts the Badgers into Georgia Southern Territory at the 46-yard line. They don't use Hayden very often in the pass game. He's a, he's a good blocker. But this, this is evidence and proof of why they should. Him catching, coming across the middle, that's a nice catch and nice run to finish that thing. Well done by Hayden Rucci. 39 yards for Rucci. And a promising young tight end behind him who's been involved today. Tucker Ashcraft, broken tackle, C.J. Williams. Williams is pushed out of bounds, but bounds that is, by Marquez Watson Trent. First down. At the 35. I'll tell you who I'm impressed with today with this Wisconsin offense is Tanner Mordecai. He has been right on the money with his throws, right on the money with his decision making. He's, he's legit. With this completion, he has connected on 63% of his passes. Bell made a great move to put him in the blunder. Inside the 20 to the 18 with that Mordecai now 19 out of 30 throwing the ball. That goes for 17. This is a nice job. I mean, he's he just hitting the open receiver. That's just good decision making. You're not trying to force it in anywhere. The ball's coming out. It's a catchable ball. He's accurate. He's having a really good game. Top receiver today in terms of number of catches. Skyler Bell with five now. Into the hands of Malusi! Ronaldo Nehemiah is applauding with that high hurdle. <laughs> down to the nine yard line, very close to a first down. Put him in the 110 meter hurdles. That's a good call by you because that's some ups right there, let me tell you. That is, that's really well done by Malusi. Make that young man a dual sport athlete. Football and the hurdles. He probably has him in his background. Splendid. To the 10. And then stays on the ground, but still makes a great move. You can run over them, or you can cut and run away from them. Chesma Lucy double dipping. Now this is really well done now. If he hits that, he's trying to reach out for the pylon. Doesn't quite get there. At the one-yard line. 
with six minutes left in the game. Looking to make it 28 consecutive points with a touchdown and an extra point. There's the touchdown. Chez Malusi deserved to finish off the drive. Georgia Southern today got away with their first three turnovers. Their first three turnovers did not result in any points for Wisconsin. Their last three turnovers have resulted in drives to score. Yeah. Uh, the difference, though, what you're seeing right now is the line of scrimmage is starting to move in Wisconsin's favor. Bowling Green under the lights at the big house. Big Ten football presented by Hampton by Hilton tonight at 730 Eastern only on the Big Ten Network and the Fox Sports app. This is this is the kind of football right now that these Badger fans are used to. They're used to seeing a dominant offensive line. They're used to seeing good defense. And heck, that's what they got here in the second half. The first half, they didn't get their shorts straightened out. But they're there. They're looking to see their team win 48 of 50 non-conference home games over the last 20 years. Once this one is done and dusted. Dalen Cobb with the kick return and the dynamic duo in the backfield. Allen 94 yards today for Wisconsin. Chez Malusic 61 yards. And the Badgers are 9-0 since the start of 2021 when Allen and Malusi both rush for 50-plus. And they have surpassed that barrier today. Those are the guys that make this offense work. And of course, of course, that offensive line, I keep on harping on that, but it's the, it's the truth. Now J.C. French, number 12, is in the game at quarterback from Roswell, Georgia, and a transfer from Memphis. And French is wrapped up by James Thompson, Jr. and Rodos Johnson. There's J.C. French, redshirt freshman, has thrown four passes this year. There's a little bit more of the vital data on Mr. French. The day ends, it would appear, for Davis Bren. Two attempts shy of his most passes in a game at his collegiate career. Had 54 in a game at Tulsa. 52 today. Five interceptions thrown, hit by Cheney on the scramble by French. French is trying to... Balls at the 27. Under five minutes left in a game where the Badgers have scored 28 consecutive points after Georgia Southern grabbed a 14-7 lead on the road early in the third quarter. French running again, eludes a tackle and lunges out beyond the 35 for the first down. French is, he needs some work. French is eyeballing exactly where he wants to throw. He's telegraphing stuff. And then if it's not, if, if one isn't there, like you got to go through your reads, right? But if you're going to go through one, two, three, if one's not there, he's pulling it down. So he'll learn. Running play, Terrence Gibbs. A hit and a tackle by Jake Cheney. I'm not sure I truly understand why Georgia Southern was picked fifth in their division in the Sun Belt Conference, but they were. This is a good football team, and what they will obviously look back upon with regret is the frequency with which they turned the ball over today. Yep. Running play, Gibbs on second down. James Thompson with a tackle on that second down play with 3.20 left.
We welcome those of you who are watching the game today between Louisville and Indiana. At Camp Randall Stadium in Madison, Wisconsin, Mark Folleville, Matt Millen, Elise Miniker on the sideline. Wisconsin has scored 28 consecutive points. A sack by Daryl Peterson here on third down. They lead 35 to 14. And we'll have the ball back here with inside of three minutes to go. Yeah, that's a nice stunt there by Peterson. He's going to... He starts on the outside and comes back on the inside in a loop. And uh, when that guard pushes out hard to the tackle and you escape that, there's nobody there to pick you up. Yesterday when we talked with Luke Fickle, the new head coach of the Badgers, he said, you can sense more confidence from the offense. They're a little bit ahead of the defense which I would have expected it to be the other way around based on spring ball and ball camp. But the defense has been ahead today with all the forced turnovers. It's propelling them to a 21-point lead. Today we got two more games coming up next. Western Michigan going to Iowa. Hawks trying to remain perfect. Rutgers trying to do the same against an old conference foe in Virginia Tech. BTN.com slash Game Finder for channel info in your area. All presented by Unleaded 88. Let's get you back out to the stadium. Thanks, Dave. We have 214 left in the game. And it is Wisconsin now on offense. After Georgia Southern putted it away. Braden Locke is in the game at quarterback now for the Badgers. Their defense has been fantastic today. Six turnovers forced. Travian Blaylock didn't have any of the turnovers, but his presence on the field was part of the collective effort on defense today, as you see this running play on first down. He's a sixth-year senior. His chance to play in 2022 ended when he tore his ACL in spring ball. He opted to come back, Travian Blaylock did, for his sixth year because of his love for football that he developed growing up around the game. His dad, Derek Blaylock, was a running back in the NFL for five years. He is husband to Tatiana, a father of two, a four-year-old son and a one-year-old daughter, a graduate student, and a football player. He balances all of that because of a resilience he learned from his parents and because of a desire to be an older player and helping young guys with their approach to the game. Some days he said, I don't want to practice, but you remember you're practicing to get better, and I want to be a light on the team. We talked to Travian Blaylock yesterday, and it was an awesome chat, man. Yeah, great kid, great, you know, a lot of stuff on his plate, and he handles yes. it really well. You don't find very many like him. From Humble, Texas, outside of Houston, Jackson Aker with the run here. Scheduled to air next, the Big Ten Live football game break presented by Discount Tire. Breaks down all the action and gets you ready for the rest of the triple header. This is exactly the kind of game that Luke Fickle could build on. They, they, got, they took a step better. They're, they're, they're better than they were a week ago. They didn't make the mistakes that they did. Like they're more getting more comfortable. They played a little freer, which was the, the word around the locker room all week. Yes, that was the word. We heard it loud and clear yesterday from coaching staff and players. Well, and the other thing that they did, Matt, was Luke Fickle said they'd been training to finish. They did not do that. They put themselves in a position to do so last week and did not. And today they finished. After falling behind by seven, then a flood of turnovers committed by the Georgia Southern Eagles turned into points and an easy win in the end, uh, scoreboard-wise, it will appear so. I think the recipe for success is similar to what it has been. I think once this offensive line started to come off the ball, they settled in, they got the running game going, and that changed things. I think Tanner Mordecai, Tanner Mordecai, he's a good quarterback. Yes, yes, Made absolutely. Good decisions, not too far up, not too far down. He's going he, to, can he smile? Let's, is that a, might be a smile. Yeah, no, it's, not a, it's a wry smile. It's a wry, okay, <laughs> we're going with that. No, I, I like this kid a lot. I, I like his decision making, and he's got a nice quick release, so good for him. Worked with Kyler Murray's father, Kevin Murray, 
former Texas A&M quarterback. That's been a, a quarterback that he trained with at the high school level. He's from Waco, Texas. Midway High School in Waco. Flag down. Yeah, marker is down. The other thing, too, that we saw out of Mordecai is he has ways to extend plays because of his legs. He ran for two touchdowns today, and one of them was a was really nice scramble. Yeah, well, people forget about that part of him. Yep. They forgot about that part of his game, and they, he, he can – he can extend plays, plus he can also take off and, and gain ground. I know this Wisconsin holding offense number 41, 10-yard penalty from the previous spot, third down. I know this fan base is, is used to a lot of winning, and I think with this staff and Luke Fickle, you're going you're gonna to get that. Yeah, he's going to win a lot of football games. It's, it's going to have to be a little patient here. They'll be a better football team three weeks from now than they are now. Well, certainly we know that Luke Fickle had the formula at Cincinnati two years ago. The only group of five conference team to break through and be in the four-team college football playoff since that era began in 2014. Penalty move the Badgers back. Jackson Aker has had a few runs here at the end of the game. Local kid from Madison. And that plunge is the last play of the game. There will be better days ahead in our estimation for the Georgia Southern Eagles. A good football team well coached by Clay Helton. He'll walk across the field and shake hands and a little hug with Luke Fickle. The final score today in Madison, Wisconsin 35, Georgia Southern 14. Wisconsin is the first Big Ten team since these stats have been recorded since 2000 to have five plus interceptions and five plus sacks in a game. That is called putting your mark on the game if you are the fellows on the defensive side of the football. Record is 2-1 and one now for both teams. And after win number two for Wisconsin, we go down to the field. Elise Miniker with Badgers head coach Luke Fickle. Coach, I think you know i got to start by asking you about your defense. They got the six turnovers, uh, the five interceptions. Just what did you see in them today? Made plays, you know. I mean, we're not, some things aren't real sharp, and they moved the ball a little bit on us. But when we had an opportunity to make some plays, we uh, we went up and made the plays. And I don't know if we've done that all year so far. And then in the second half, the turnovers started turning into points. How are you seeing the two units work together there late? You know, I mean, halftime we we had to make some adjustments. We didn't come out and start real fast or anything like that. And I guess we had to get down 14 to seven before we kind of realize what it is that we need to do and kind of let it fly a little bit and quit worrying about all the other little things and obviously we played a lot better after probably about uh, four or five minutes into the second half. Well that's a big deal because the playing loose I know that you really wanted to emphasize that and the confidence what did you see in taking a step forward in that today? Well I hope and believe that that's what it is right I mean I, I didn't see a panic in the locker room um, you know it's it's a tough situation we're not playing great and but you're still in, in, in a great you know position to win the football game and um, you know, and you come out the second half, and I, I, there's some leadership. I mean, I, to be honest with you, obviously the offense struggled a little bit, especially in the first, but Tanner Mordecai, his leadership never bats an eye. I, that, that means a lot on the sideline, even when things, when you're down 14-7. to seven. Just then about your quarterback, what can you say about his effort and how he led this team today? Well, I mean, he's a guy that makes plays, and he's a guy that everybody kind of gets confidence through, and I like to call him, he's a multiplier. When I mean, you got a quarterback that uh, you trust and respect and can make some things happen, he, he multiplies a lot of people around him, and we got to continue to use him. Coach, thanks so much. Thank you. That's it from Camp Randall Stadium, where Wisconsin defeats Georgia Southern 35-14. Coming up next, the Big Ten Live football game break presented by Discount Tire. Breaks down all the action and gets you ready for the rest of the triple header. For Matt Millen, Elise Miniker, our producer Denny Blunt, our director Pat O'Connor, statistician Kevin Fox, and spotter Mike Rodolfi, and the entire broadcast crew in Madison, Wisconsin. I'm Mark Folliwell saying so long. We'll see you next week.